Tonight, we will get rid of the book of Nineveh. I'm uh, uh, Nahum. I'm sure you all are sick of hearing about Nahum, but um, it's a uh, it's an incredible book. And uh, so we'll finish tonight, and we'll try to do it on time as well. Let's bow our heads, God. We thank you for being so good to us. You are that God that we can trust and depend on. We ask that you would bless this lesson tonight. Let there be something in this we can take and apply to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you, brother, for helping us out tonight. Amen. We are... Uh... All right.
right, all right. So last week we, we went through Nahum, the second chapter, and Nahum, the second chapter, it, um, it is uh, foretelling the doom of Nineveh, talking about the doom that is going to, uh, going to come. Nineveh, of course, is the, uh, the capital city of uh, Assyria. And we've gone through uh, what, what Assyria is. And, and um, uh, the first, first chapter of Nineveh, it, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, of, of Nahum, it, it starts uh, really just uh, talking about the, the greatness of God. And, and, and he is the divine warrior. He's there for uh, his people comforting Judah, who had... Um, uh, uh, fallen into all kinds of idolatry, went into captivity uh, under uh, Nineveh, under Assyria, and God then tells Judah, I'm, I'm coming to rescue you. You're not going to have to deal with this Assyria anymore. And uh, first, the first chapter, the 12th, uh, first chapter 12 uh, through the 13th verse, the 15th verse, uh, and and um, the second chapter in the second verse, it is uh, a comfort of Judah. And then the first chapter, the ninth through the 11th verse, uh, the 14th verse, and then beginning the second, second chapter, it, it, it is talking about the judgment of Nineveh. And of course, the second chapter is the vision, the taunt. Uh, God is even taunting Nineveh um, uh, because he is uh, foretelling what is about to happen to this this cruel nation. And the reason I wanted to I want to go through Nineveh, uh, Nahum, the reason I want to go through Nahum is throughout history, every major city, every major power has always shown to be just what Nahum um, has, 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 has spoken about Nineveh. Uh, it's just something about, uh, there's a, a statement that says uh, power corrupts and absolute power absolutely corrupts. And, and you'll see that. But if you, if you look at uh, uh, the book of Nahum and if you look at Nineveh, you will, you will see similarities between Nineveh, which is this ancient city and this ancient people, to current times. Now, let's go uh, just back a little bit to the second chapter. We're only going to read uh, just a couple verses from the second chapter. And, and, and this flows into the third chapter of Nahum. Nahum 2 and 11 says, where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions? Where the lion, even the old lion, walked and the lions wept and none made them afraid. And so uh, Nahum is about to, the second chapter is a foretelling of what's going to happen. The third, the second chapter, the third chapter is going to go into a description of the fall. And so the 11th verse talks about a place absolutely secure that Nineveh and all of its people had. Right? It says, where is the dwelling of the lions? No one dare comes into the dwelling of the lion, right? It's the feeding place of the young lions. It is where the old lions prepare the future, prepares the young lions to become what the old lions currently are. Are you with me? This is, this is how evil is, is uh, uh, it continues because there is the teaching of the young, the brutality of the old. Are you with me? And it says, even the old lion walked, and the lions wept, the young lion, right? There's a path that they walk, 
and none, there is nothing that can make them afraid. Matter of fact, there is uh, spoken of in, in this time now of, 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 I guess you could call it a silent university. It is a place where certain of the young are quietly being taught how to carry on the narrative of, of the new world. I, I, give you this example, and I, don't, I, won't, I won't call her name. Um, there was this, this, this young uh, girl, and this was a, a, around the time that uh, uh, Donald Trump was president, and she was a mean, little mean looking girl. And, and uh, I think at one point, uh, President Trump told her, why don't you get you some dolls and, some dolls and go play? And, and so they had this young girl, she was about, I don't know, 13, 14 years old. They had her at the United Nation and, and uh, she was up there looking mean and, and said that I should not even be here, right? The reason that I'm here is because of your failure. And she's talking about the old folk. Right? The reason that I'm here is because of your failure. And, 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 and so she got so much publicity and, and it was like, you know, how did they find this young girl? You know, because it was the, the, the uh, story was that they just found her out of nowhere and, and somehow she was just discovered. Well, it goes on to find out that her mama was a globalist, her daddy was a globalist, right? She was a complete insider and, and right? And so it's this kind of young person that they are grooming because if there's a book, I won't call his name, uh, I just said I wasn't gonna call his name. Um, he has a book, you can go look up the book because you know people would talk about this and they call them conspiracy theories because folk were saying uh, during the, uh, you know, around 2020 with this sickness, uh, folk were saying, they're trying to reset the world. Hey, y'all, you, know, you conspiracy theories, theorists, ain't nobody trying to reset no world. Well, then this cat comes out with a book called The Great Reset. You can go on Amazon, just go look it up. You ain't got to buy it. And matter of fact, if you want to know what the book's about, go read the comments. Just read the comments on Amazon about this guy who, matter of fact, they just met in, I think it's Davos, Switzerland. They, they call it, it's this Davos. And, and, and so at this big conference, they are laying the groundwork for the future. Because they're old. See, a lot of them are getting old. And so what do they need? They need this young blood. They're teaching this young blood that you are great. You are the lion and you eat the world. The world belongs to you. It will bow to you, and they're, and they're teaching them. They're literally teaching them. Um, uh, and it's so funny where you have people who talk about how they need, I, I shouldn't be saying this because it, it don't make no difference. Nobody listens to us, and they, they don't like me if they do. Um, uh, how they're saying, well, we, you know, uh, America's not going to be anything until we get Donald Trump back in office. Right? And then you had to get Joe Biden in office, right? Because you had to get him in office. Because if, if you don't get Joe in, the world is going to be messed up if you don't get Joe in. Joe is going to save the world from being messed up. All right, Joe. Right? I mean, look at what has happened. In the, here's the point. It doesn't make any difference which one of these jokers get in because they all work for the same folk. Okay, I keep saying that, don't. All right, so here is the, the 11th verse is talking about, matter of fact, um, see, this is, this is stuff that they do and, and you don't, because they know the average person doesn't pay attention, right? You can tell us one thing and then you come right behind and tell us something else. We don't follow anything back because we've been trained that way, just the way we've been trained. And so... Some of the very, okay, I'll say this and then I, I got to get off of this one. Notice how important these people's children are. Now, the, the president before this president, they say he openly talked about how crazy some of his kids were, right? But they are some of the most protected people. Matter of fact, some of these very children are said to be 
in this quiet university being prepped for the future. Now, the current president, now you, I don't know if you know, he got a son, they found his laptop, he was doing, like some of the stuff that he was doing on the laptop and some of the videos, they put cats away for that. This is evidence, you know, they, they take this evidence and you wind up with time. This boy done, done he, he, yeah, he, he done done some stuff, all kind of stuff, and what, and what about him? Highly protected. Highly protected. Why? Let's, let's read this verse again. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of what? The young lions. Doesn't make any difference what they do. They're untouchable. Untouchable. Where the lion, even the old lion, walked and the lions wept, the young lion, and none made them afraid. They're not scared of anything. This boy can snort up a whole couch. He's not afraid of anything. And then it says, the lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps, for his whelps, and, and strangled for his lionesses, and, and filled his holes with prey. I mean, he built a storehouse out of the death and destruction. And his dens with raven. Behold, this is God talking. Behold, I am against thee, said the Lord of hosts. And I will burn her chariots in the smoke. And the sword shall devour thy young lions. And I will cut off thy prey from the earth. And the voice of thy messengers, those folk that you send out, scaring everybody, he said, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Um, you heard about this, this, this guy that owns um, the largest electric company, uh, electric car company in the world. Well, he was getting ready to buy, you know, you know one of the social media companies, Twitter. And, and so, uh, you know, folk kind of think that he did this on purpose. So he made an offer. And then he asked them, he said, well, tell you what, what I need is I need all of your data. I need all of the information on all of the accounts that are actually under your service. And, uh, and, and so, um, but what he was trying to get at, he was trying to expose what they had been doing for years. And that is using artificial intelligence creating accounts by the millions, using these accounts to go out and create false narratives for political purposes. So uh, uh, um, a great percentage of the accounts on Twitter are not even real people. They just made up by artificial intelligence to go out as messengers to to spread whatever message that, whatever the narrative needs to be. Are you seeing this? This is, this is, this is what you call propaganda. This is what you, re remember, I think it was in Isaiah that uh, 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 one of the kings sent his messengers and he, he was, and, the, and, and uh, the, the, uh, uh, Isaiah's men asked the messengers, he said, listen, uh, speak to us in your language. Don't let the people hear what you're saying, you know, because, you know, just talk to us. Don't talk to the people. Just talk to us. And the messenger said, no, no, mm, I'm going to talk to all y'all. He said, because the people need to hear. I can't say what the Bible said, but the Bible does say that when they drink in their own urine and they eat in their own dung, he said, I, I want them to know that it's your fault. Because you you trying to tell them that your God's going to deliver. He ain't going to deliver nothing. We're taking all y'all down. But the point is, is that the men didn't want the news to get to the people. Wanted the people to be blinded, by, blinded to the facts. And so here God's saying, he said, listen, I'm, I'm going to silence the voice of your messenger. All this stuff that you got creating whatever narrative, he said, I'm going to silence it. So this is Nahum, the second chapter. Then the third chapter, which is the end of Nahum, 
And this is where God, um, he, he does what he does because you, we have to understand there is an end of the story. Of, of the, story. the end of the, of the story is that God wants humanity to be brought up to his expectation. There is, there is something that God has in mind for us. He loves us so much, and he wants us to come up to uh, uh, the, the place that he has in mind. Matter of fact, in Corinthians, he says the end of the story is that God wants to be all in all. God himself wants to be in everybody. Okay? And so we get to the end of Revelation. Uh, the Bible talks about how Lucifer is going to be bound for a thousand years and there's going to be peace. And then he's going to be uh, loosed again for a short time for the final purging. And then he's going to be totally put away. And then it talks about there's going to be a city where there's no need for the sun because God is going to be the light of that city. See, this is what God is moving toward. So as he moves towards that, everything that would to get in his way of bringing his humanity. The Bible says, for God so loved who? The world. We're his people. And anything that would get in the, get in the way of his people, he said, you got to come down. And so he gives us an example of this in Nahum. Right? So the Bible tells us everything that is, is because it's already been. There is what? Nothing new under the sun. And so he said, I wanna, I'm just going to give you this. I want you to see that no matter how strong a nation is, no matter how impenetrable its, 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 its uh, uh, barriers are, no matter what weapons it has, now you can't whoop it. So you can't whoop these nations. So you might as well give it up. Ain't nothing you can do. Now, can I show you something? Can I show you the solution that God, I mean, it ain't really a solution, but I, wa I want to show you this. Hosea, real quick, let's, let's go to Hosea. I want to show you something. Hosea, the first chapter. We, we're not going to do much in Hosea. We'll get to Hosea later. Um, uh, Hosea, the first chapter. And, and Hosea's, I mean, you know, these are, these, these see, we're, we're going to go, we'll, we'll go through this. Like Nahum, we're going through this not as doctrine, but, but going through it as partial history, as a reminder, and as a foreshadow. See, nothing can stand against God. I don't care how strong it is. I don't, I, you know, and, and these folk, they really think they're getting away with all kind of stuff. Uh, you know, um, uh, is one, one lady, she's the Speaker of the House. You know, you can't call these folk names. And, and, and crooked is all outdoors. I'm talking crooked. This, the, the, her, between her and her husband, they do more insider trading than, remember, um, what was that, uh, 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 Martha Stewart? Remember Martha Stewart? Remember they, they, put, they sent Martha Stewart to jail? Remember that? They sent Martha Stewart to jail for making $400,000, something like that, and the woman was worth something like $400 million. She took some advice from somebody and, and, and Comey, and I, I was with all these guys. Remember James Comey, who was the FBI director? I read James Comey's book. This is when I was against Donald Trump. I mean, they, you know, they all, but, they, you know, I, I just, you know, I'm just, you know, Donald Trump, he's the worst thing ever. And I read James Comey's book, and James Comey was, you know, just self-righteous, come to find out one of the biggest crooks you ever, ever, because uh, they all crooks. And anyway, James Comey is the one that prosecuted uh, uh, Martha Stewart. James Comey prosecuted Martha Stewart. And you should see some of the stuff James Comey's accused of. And so, um, but, but the, the current Speaker of the House, she just did something that the best traders on Wall Street can hardly do. And she did what's called, she bought the dip. Now what the dip is, is when the market hits the bottom. Who knows when that is? Nobody knows when the market hits the bottom. There was, a, there was a, uh, some guys that was trying to short Tesla because they said Tesla had, had gotten too high and Tesla was about to fall down. And so they were trying to 
They were trying to, uh, uh, all right, this is the top. And so they start selling. And th this guy lost over a billion dollars because he's trying to get the top and Tesla kept going up and he's trying to sell it, but it, w it wouldn't sell. So he wound up losing, I mean, over a billion dollars. Well, this girl here, she perfectly timed the bottom. I mean, it's, I mean she, it's, it's as if they saw her put her trade in and then the market started going up. Well, they, you know, her and her husband are legendary for, for just picking stocks just at the right time. I mean, the girl is good. They need to start a hedge fund. She's so good. Because she has all this information that she's not supposed to use, and they use it. You see, they, you, you can't even go to the bathroom without these folk knowing. Every time your phone moves, they know where you're going. When, when um, this sickness first hit, whenever someone went to the hospital or whenever someone took a test, they knew, right? How did they know? Because when you take a test, you got to log through your phone. They were so detailed, I, I think it was something like the Navy or one of the military actually had a software where they monitored everyone that ever got, everyone that ever tested positive. And so they knew everyone that was around based on their cell phone. Once you tested, they knew everyone that, you, that, that you'd been around in the past week. They knew everyone that you were around at the current time because your phone is real-time data everywhere you go, all through the city, through your house, through your neighborhood, everywhere you go. They know everything. How do you beat somebody like this? How do you even, how, I mean, how do you even have hope against something like this? You can't fight them. Right? You weren't around with your little uh, AK-47, and, and, you know, and they don't want you to have nothing. Right? How do you fight something like that? Well, God said you can't. You can't fight nothing like that. Look at what he says in Hosea. Hosea, it, it goes through and, and you know, it's, it's talking about, anyway, uh, Hosea 1, 7. It says, but I, this is God talking, will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will, will what? Save them, how? By the Lord their God. It says, and will, what's the next word? Not save them by what? By bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Ain't nothing you can come up with to bring these jokers down. Nothing. But God said, if you lean on me, you ain't going to need a horse. You ain't going to need a bow. You ain't going to need a horse man. Because it ain't going to do you no good no way. He said, I'll bring them down. Are you seeing this? He's trying to show you that no matter how strong these folk are, no matter how much they steal from you, and they stealing too, they stealing at a rate that the world has never seen. Greatest wealth transfer in potentially human history. And they will push you any way they want you to go. If they want you to buy electric vehicles, I'm not saying that they do, but they'll raise gas so high you'll be praying that Toyota come up with an electric vehicle that you can afford. Are you with me? Ain't nothing you can do against them, and God knows it. This is why he gives us these examples. You can't bring down Nineveh. I don't care how you march. I don't care how many bows you get. I don't care how many rifles you get. You cannot bring these folk down. And the current president told you. You know what he said? He said, we ain't worried about y'all and y'all guns. This is what he said about the people that elected him. He wasn't talking about the Mexicans coming under the border. He wasn't talking about the, about, about the, uh, the, the Russians. He wasn't talking about, what's this, what's this, this place that the, they, they fighting? Ukraine. He wasn't talking about the Ukrainians. No, he was talking about you Americans. He said, I don't, we not worried about y'all and y'all guns. 
He said, because we got nuclear weapons. I guess he said, if you think we dropped it on just on Black Wall Street, he said, we'll drop it on all y'all. All right, but anyway, so he, the, 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 the word is trying to tell you that you can't beat them. That's why it said, if my people, which are called by who? My name. Ain't nothing you can do but humble yourself and pray and turn from your madness. And, and do you know what they, don't, what they don't want you to let go of as Americans? They don't want, they, they go, I, me and uh, Caleb, we were going out of town, and I'm in the store. Me and him were in the store, and I picked up this shirt. I said, Caleb, I like this shirt right here. He said, Dad, you can't get that. I said, it's a nice shirt. He said, Dad, that's for the gays. I said, Lord Jesus, right? I didn't know. It had rainbows all in it. I didn't know that that was their symbol. And, you know, I thought, you know, I'm seeing a rainbow. I'm, I'm thinking about the promise of God. He said he'll never flood us again. They said, uh-uh, no, no, that's our symbol. And they don't, want, they don't want a woman to be a woman. They don't want a little boy to be a little boy. Do you know that now they won't even call the first ladies first ladies? Now, it ain't, been a, it ain't been a woman president where there's ever been a man first lady. And, now, and, and so they, they call them first spouses. You know why? Because they got to keep the filth alive. Do you know how you tear a nation up? Filth. Yeah. That's why they don't, they don't want children to walk straight. They don't want women to walk straight. They don't want men to walk straight. Because as long as you keep filth in the street, you can keep God out. Oh, yeah. That's the secret, baby. That's why they got your, your kids, they can't learn arithmetic, but they know everything from Jay-Z and all this old nasty Cardi B. They know all of that. I mean, they, uh, they you know, they, they got it all down. And they, and they pay them. In what world is a, do you pay a rapper this kind of money? When they were saying a hip, a hop, a hippity hip, the hip, hip, hop, you don't stop. Rock it to the bang, bang, boogie, up, jump, right? I mean, when Rapper's Delight was around, I mean, he, you would run into these cats in Walmart. Right? Because they didn't pay them no money to be positive. But if you bring nastiness and filth to these children, boy, you can ride in Bentleys, you can live in million dollar homes because they got to keep filth in the streets. Because as long as filth is in the streets, folk will not call God. Are you, are you getting this? Filth is, is their refuge. They need filth. Are you with me? All right. So he's saying, y'all better wake up because you ain't going, you know, you got, you got these militia. They all in the backwoods, you know, with target practice and all that. Man, all they got to do is take one incinerary bomb and drop it on your little compound. All y'all done. Incinerary bomb. Not, 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 nothing heavy. Just, just a little incinerary bomb and just, just okay. Us. He's, he's trying to tell us, and us ain't a certain color folk. See, color is over. Color is a weapon that they use to separate us. Until we realize that, honey, we need each other, we got to get our houses in order, and we got to know that there is a real God. Are you seeing this? All right. But you have to be able to identify. So he says, listen, there ain't no, there ain't nothing. There ain't no sword, ain't no bow, ain't, ain't no war, ain't no horses, and ain't no horsemen. There is nothing that can save you from these folk. Nothing except God. Look at history. All right, let's go back. Let's go back to Nahum. All right, I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, Nahum, the third chapter. Let's, let's, let's do this so we can get out of Nahum and get into something else. All right. Now, so in Nahum, the third chapter, first verse, it says, woe to the bloody city. It is, I mean, it is what? All full of lies. Now, this don't sound familiar. Not, 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 any, not any country in particular. Every country in particular. It is full of lies, 
and robbery, the prey departeth not. You know what that means? They never run out of folk to prey on. Never run out of folk to prey on. Never run out of folk to misuse. Never run out of folk to abuse. They abuse everybody. Every color, every race, eh? every gender. They, you, can, you can transition into a frog. They're going to get you too. It says the noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of wheels and the prancing horses and the jumping chariots never stops. A whip, rattling wheels, which, which is uh, chariots and all kind of devices coming to take away whatever little freedom you thought you had. The horsemen lifted up both the bright sword and the, glitz, and, and the glittering spear, and there, and, there is a mul and there is a multitude of slain, dead folk everywhere, and a great number of carcasses. You know what? There was, there was a guy, when, when this sickness hit, he, he uh, totally followed it, and, and, and totally, when he's a doctor, I think he's from London, and totally went with the narrative, encouraged people to get vac vaccinated, went through all of this, and, and, uh, and then slowly, you know, you know, because data kept pouring in, and then there was all these data leaks from the, from the vaccine companies, and, and, um, re and, and it just came out recently by him, and this was a guy that was totally, you know, in, in lock and step with the World Health Organization. Every, I mean, he was lock and step. He came, it came out that, remember this, this, this monkey uh, pox that they, you know, they, they ready to scare the whole world with? Well, it just came out that the monkey pox and this last sickness they done discovered was all being cooked in the same laboratory. Not saying it was released on purpose, but somehow it just it, it got out by accident because we know they wouldn't do anything like this on purpose. And, and, but both of these were, now you go look this up. This ain't no, this is, this is common knowledge now. And, and there was a guy that talked about a lab leak early on, early 2000s. That, that doesn't look like this could have come from no kind of market, right? It said, we, we think this was a lab leak. Unintentional now. Nobody did that on purpose. Unintentional lab leak. And I'm telling you, they crucified this guy. Uh, uh, Brett Weinstein, I think his name. I mean, they crucified him. I mean, he lost friends. They, everything. What happened, what, what happened later on? Almost 90% plus certainty that it was a lab leak. So it says here, and there is a multitude of slain. They never run out of victims, ever. And a great number of carcasses. See, this ain't new. Whatever it is, whatever, whatever way they come up to accidentally kill people. And there is none in to their Corpse. Is that, what you, is that what you read there? There, there, there is. It, it does not end. The, the dead bodies, there is no end to them. They stumble upon their corpse. They got so many dead until they stumble over their dead. This, this, now, this ain't talking about us. This is talking about Nahum. Because right? we're reading the book of Nahum. Now, can I show you something? All right. America has been around for, I wrote it down, some, something like 200, hold up, 2022 minus 1776, 246 years, 246 years. In 246 years, we have been at war for almost 220. At war. 
no peace whatsoever. Matter of fact, we got started with a war, revolutionary war. Go from that to the War of 1812, the Mexican War, the American Civil War, the Spanish-American War, the Indian-American War, World War I, World War II. Then we had a Cold War, because they couldn't think of it. And during the Cold War, they said it was a time of peace until you look inside the Cold War and find out all the espionage that was done and all the proxy wars that were done. All right? While we so-called weren't fighting, we were starting fights and wars in other parts of the country. The Vietnam War, the invasion of, Gren of Grenada, the invasion of Panama, Operation Desert Storm, Operation United Shield, Operation Determined Falcon, Operation Enduring Freedom, o Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Freedom Falcon. That was in 2011, because we had a president said, no, we coming out of Iraq when he was elected in 2008, and so then he kept that war going until 2011, and then 2011, he said, let's get us a new one going, and so 2011, we had Operation Freedom Falcon. So in our time, 260 some years, we've been at war for almost 220 years. Now, if you ain't got nothing to do one day as you're eating some tuna and crackers, just do a Google search and start looking at how many people have died in those wars. Are you with me? Okay. All right, so again, this is, all right, let's get back to Nahum. The Bible says they stumble upon their corpse. Remember that journalist that got fired because he took a picture of this, uh, uh, what was that big old plane, C-17, whatever this giant plane was, and it was full of corpse, draped with American flags. And he took a picture of it and released it, because nobody, nobody really knew how bad uh, Iraq was. I mean, they bringing them boys back by the plane loads, bodies. And so he says, they stumble upon their corpse. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the, uh, of the well-favored harlot. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot. America is so well-favored until you can't even sue America. There was, uh, during the 60s, there was a civil rights leader that said that he was going to take the grievance of a certain people to the United Nation. He said, because we ain't getting nowhere in this country. He died, but I don't think that's why he died. Um, it said, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, right? This is a popular harlot. The mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Again, we're talking about Nineveh. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will discover thy skirts upon thy face. What is he saying? He said, I'm going to take your skirt and I'm going to lift it up over your head. I'm going to show the world your nakedness, what you really are. And I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. I'm going to expose you, Nineveh. Yeah, you're well favored because of your brutality. The only reason folk respect you is because they don't want to die by your hands. I will cast abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock. I'm going to make the world, I'm going to make you so nasty and so vile until the world, I mean, you ever seen something so bad until, you ever, you, matter of fact, you can be driving down the highway and you can see a mangled mess and folk cannot, the whole highway, see, you think it's an accident on your side. It ain't no accident on your side. The accident is on the other side. All the folk on your side are what? Gazing over at the accident. 
God said, I'm going to make your wreck so terrible until it's going to be a traffic jam folk looking over just to see how bad you are. Are you seeing this? He said, I'm going to make you a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that, that all they that uh, looked upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid to waste. Who will bemoan her? There will be no one to even feel sorry for you. Nobody's going to cry for you. Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Where, where can I get anybody to feel sorry for you? Because I have exposed you. Everybody knows what you are. And so now that folks see you for what you are, nobody is going to feel sorry. They're going to be thankful. Thank God this monster's gone. He said, art, art, art thou better than populous? No. That, that, that was uh, uh, situated among the rivers and had waters round about it, whose rampant was the sea, and her walls was uh, and her wall was from the sea. And th this is this is what he's saying. He said, Do you think you're superior to Egyptian, to, to Egypt? Proudly invincible on the river Nile, protected by the great river, walled in by the river? If, if, if Egypt wasn't secure, you think you're going to be secure? Do you think anything can, can save you from me? Why, why is this? Because God is saying this thing is in the way of me transforming my people into what they should be. And I got to get rid of this thing. Now, because God plays chess, in order to get rid of that thing, he needs another thing that's bigger and stronger than that thing that he can move in place to get rid of that thing. And that was Babylon. And so he moves Babylon into place to get rid of Nineveh. Then he moves Rome in place to get rid of Babylon. Are you seeing this? And Babylon and Rome is just an extension of Babylon. And so what is he doing? He's consolidating the power of evil. Why? so that he can get rid of it all. He says Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. Put and Lubin were her helpers. Yet was she carried away. She went into captivity. God said they thought they had infinite strength because they had, they had allies. They had folk to protect them. They had folk to join with. But let me ask you, who can you get to join with against me? He said, yet was well, she carried away. She went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of the streets. And they cast lots for her honorable men. Her men fell so hard until they were, they, they were pulling straws, saying, well, I'll take that one. Give me that one over there. Her honorable men. And all her great men were bound in chains. Thou also shall be drunken. Thou shalt be hid. Thou also shall seek strength because of the enemy. All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees. God said, all your strength, all, all, all your, your, your fortified places, your armory, your strong men, your weapons, he said, uh, all thy strongholds shall be, be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. What does that mean? He said, when, when the, apparently when the figs are ripe, you can just go bump the tree and the figs will fall. God said, he said, all your strongholds, they're they going to be so strong that all the enemy has to do is just bump your tree and everything you got is going to fall. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies and fire shall devour thy bars. And then God is making fun of them. He said, draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. He said, go into clay, go build you some bricks and tread the martyr. Make strong 
the brickling. I mean, just go on and make, just fortify yourself. Go on and hurry up and make you some bricks. Come on, because your enemy's coming. Because he knows there's nothing they can do. He says, there shall be, uh, he says, there shall the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like a canker worm. Make, thy, make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locust. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants. Now, I'm going to read this out of the Message Bible. I want to read the, the last part of this out of the Message Bible. It says, you've multiplied shops and shopkeepers, more buyers and sellers than stars in the sky. He said, you, y'all, you got shops everywhere. Every, on every corner, you got franchises. You, you, you got folk, just, they selling all kind of trinkets. They, they sell everything. This is, this is God talking to Nineveh. He said, you, you've multiplied shops and shopkeepers, more buyers and sellers than stars in, in the sky. A plague of locusts cleaning out the neighborhood. Cleaning out the neighborhood and then flying off. You clear folks' wealth and then fly off. Now, this is the message Bible talking about Nineveh. Your bureaucrats are locusts. Your brokers and bankers are locusts. You see this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was about to... No, I can't. All right, early on, look at what it says. Early on, they're all at your service, full of smiles and promises. But later, when you return with questions or complaints, you'll find they've flown off and are nowhere to be found. Where did you get that from? The 17th verse in the King James says, they crown, I mean, thy crown are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers. They camp in the hedges in the cold of the day, because they don't like to move when it's cold. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. You can't find them. Can't find them crooks. And then he said, King of Assyria, your shepherd leaders in charge of caring for your people are busy doing everything else but. Do you see what it says here? What it's saying, your shepherd leaders is talking about your politicians. They do anything they can to get elected, but as soon as they get elected, you can't find that they have done a single promise that they promise you. We're going to build whatever it is they're going to build. We're going to make sure you got more than enough. We're going to make sure this. We going and you can't even find baby formula. Couldn't find toilet paper at one point. Are you, are you seeing this? All right, so he says, they're busy doing everything else, but they're not doing their job. And your people are scattered and lost. There's no one to look after, nobody to look after the people. You ever notice that? I mean, these folk live in high on the hall, and there's nobody to look after us. Now, The 19th verse, which is the last verse of Nahum. And this is a scary verse because this, this, we have to prepare ourselves. All we, we always have to be prepared. All right? Jesus even said, he said, uh, pray that your flight is not in the winter time. This is what he said. He said, when God comes to make a change, it's going to stir up the enemy. And he said, pray that you don't have to run in the winter. Right? I mean, the, the, there was an old song that, that said, uh, uh, keep your lamp trimmed and burning bright. Right? Keep, keep, keep yourself pure and right before God. 
right? Because when, when whatever happens, we're going to need him every step of the way. We're going to need God like never before. Because when God gets tired, there ain't nobody that can stop him. Nobody. Look at what he says in this last verse in the book of Nineveh. He said, there is no healing for thy bruise. He's talking to Assyria. He said, you have been so dirty, there is nothing, there is no healing for your bruise. He said, thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brood of these shall clap the hands over thee. The world is going to be happy that I do away with you. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? Show me a nation that was not affected by your wickedness. You know what was interesting is when they were uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, how dastardly the, uh, uh, you know, Russia had colluded with, now, I don't know if y'all been following this, y'all, y'all, if y'all look up, you'll find out that that whole collusion was made up. I ain't gonna tell you who it was made up by, by that woman that was running for president, and she was trying to cheat, and she didn't win. She even cheated her own party. And, and, uh, anyway, and, and, and so uh, they were talking about how, how grievous it was that there was a collusion with Russia. And somebody said, how in the world does America got the nerve to get mad because you claim that somebody, uh, you know, meddled in your election when you've been meddled meddling in elections since the 40s. All over the world, you've been meddling in elections, putting up puppet leaders so that you can control. Why? Because you want the resources. And so he says to Nineveh, to Assyria, tell me what nation has not been affected by your wickedness. Are you seeing this? I'm telling you, when them, when them old saints said, get right saints, get right church, and let's go home. Hey, I mean, we got to get right because when God gets tired, who, who in the world can stand again? And so the book of Nineveh is a warning to the world that at some point you are standing in God's progress. Because the Bible says when God finished all, each time God finished the day, what did he say? It is good. Are you seeing this? And so all these crooked folk that are talking about how mad God is and he don't like nobody, right? I mean, he already finished the work and his work was what? Good. He said, I know the thoughts that I have toward you. These are thoughts of peace and not evil to to give you an expected end. Who's expected end? God's. And so all these evil folk, all these evil nations are standing in the way of God doing his work. You don't believe me? Read the end of the story. The end of the story said that he's going to have a place where there's no need for a son. All the physicality, all the physical world, you don't need it because he's going to straighten all this mess out. And so he says, I'm giving you all these examples. I'm showing you what was so I can show you what is. I'm showing you what I got rid of, and I'm showing you what I got to get rid of. You seeing this? So let's not bend and bow to this world. Not to this one. This is a, this is a nasty old system we got here. And so we don't bow. But we look at his word and we see, not that he's angry, we see that he's expectant. And so he will not let evil reign because he already said it is good. Are you seeing this? And so Nineveh is reminded to us that God has not forgotten us. He's not forgotten his people. Who are his people? Humanity. He's not forgotten us. Okay, let's stand. We got to go home. Everybody all right? All right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's bow our heads. You can see Martin as you leave. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for being so good to us. You are that God that we can trust and depend on. In tough times, we can depend on God. Amen. Through the storm, 
through the rain, through sickness, through pain. We can do what? We can depend on God. And God, as we leave this place, never your presence be with us until we meet again. Let every heart say amen, amen. God bless you. See you Sunday.